Today, I'm flying the world's most luxurious flight for eight hours all the way over to Europe on Emirates Boeing 777, aka the Game Changer. Join me on the very best commercial aviation has to offer. From the incredible private suites, five-star bed designed by NASA, fine dining, and huge TV to watch movies on. But here's the thing, I have it all to myself. Yep, no one else has stomped up the $10,000 for this ticket today, though I paid significantly less using this sneaky trick, which I'll share with you in just a second. We'll start our journey today in sunny Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, just as I hop into my chauffeur-driven BMW en route to DXB International Airport. This transfer is complimentary to first-class passengers, and you can expect either a luxury BMW or Mercedes. After a short drive, we arrive at the dedicated first-class terminal. So with that, let's head inside the cool air conditioning and check in. It's certainly got to be the busiest I've ever seen a first-class check-in, but luckily Emirates has prepared for this with plenty of desks open. Around five minutes later, I'm ready to head over to clear security. A quick baggage screening later and I'm into Concourse B. This will be the first of two lounges we'll experience today. Both the business and first-class lounges are located on the second floor of the terminal, away from the pandemonium below. Let's head into the first class lounge then. After checking in, I'm led over to the dining room for breakfast. I'm starting to realize everything in Dubai is on another scale. It's hard to believe these tables would ever be filled given the capacity of this lounge. As I get settled in, let's take a look at the menu provided via a QR code on my table. You can really feel your boots here from traditional Arabic cuisine to Wagyu beef and foie gras. But I'll be saving myself for the flight, I think, and we'll stick to a sparkling water and a fresh cappuccino. Without asking, I'm served a bread basket, which is a nice touch, but seems a waste for me today. So as hinted, there is another much larger lounge which I'd like to share with you. In fact, it's the largest first-class lounge in the world over in Concourse A. It's a short monorail visit away and well worth checking out if you have time. Here's a summary of the opulence then. Its own duty-free shopping facility, sleeping room, cigar room with fully stocked bar, and even a spa. Yes, of course, I had a massage. Now, running the risk of missing my flight due to this overindulgence, the Emirates staff provide an expedited transfer over to my gate. Introducing the Interminal Emirates Chauffeur. There are actually fancy dedicated first-class buggies with soft leather seating. Sadly though, not available for me today. I am thankful for this transfer though, as the walk would have taken around 25 minutes, which certainly would have meant an impromptu extended stay in Dubai. Finally, I'm at my gate, just as the flight is closing. It's actually commonplace in the Middle East for first-class passengers to board last, in contrast to the stampede you have in the US or Europe. Here we go then, the Emirates 777-300ER, which will be taking us over to Europe today. So just before I show you the very best first class in the entire world, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, NordVPN. Did you know you're probably overpaying for flights? And that's because many booking websites track your online activity. They often know exactly where you want to fly and when. For example, if you keep looking at a flight without buying, these websites can start raising the price, building a sense of urgency that fares may go up further and you often end up buying before you're ready. With the help of NordVPN, you can browse in confidence, protecting all your online activity, shielding you and your search history from prying eyes. It also masks your IP address so snoops do not know which country you're in. Did you know different countries get access to different flight pricing and by masking your location with NordVPN you're able to access these cheaper flights. For a limited time you can get a two-year plan with a huge discount plus one month free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Just head to the link in the description nordvpn.com slash trektrendy so you don't miss out on this amazing deal. Stepping on board the Game Changer is quite unlike any other flight experience. The interior is more akin to a private plane than a commercial one. I'm directed to my seat one kilo, though I'm told I'll be the only passenger on board today so I can sit wherever I please once we've taken off. The suite is a real showstopper and I can't wipe the smile off my face as I settle into my private room. The level of space is really only matched by Singapore's A380 suites, though as noted in my review, they're not designed in the best manner for privacy and comfort. We'll store my carry-on case in the closet opposite my seat, like a glove. Well, not quite when trying to shut the door. 
Almost immediately, the service springs into action. I'm offered fresh dates from this beautiful handcrafted wooden casket, complemented by some Arabic coffee. If you're wondering what it's like, it's rather bitter, with contrasting spices such as cardamom and saffron. I love it, but it's certainly an acquired taste if you're not used to it. Now to move on to something a little heavier, champagne of course. Emirates serves a delicious 2012 Dom Perignon, though if you're lucky, sometimes they'll bring out the P2, but this is increasingly rare. Nevertheless, at over $200 a bottle, this is still punchy stuff, and I enjoy a couple of glasses as we push back from stand and begin to taxi out over to the runway. The safety video is run, made all the more civilized whilst sipping Dom. I fasten my seatbelt in preparation for takeoff. Like most Emirates planes, there's a nose camera, perfect to watch takeoff, albeit hard for me to film. As we glide up into the scorching Emirati afternoon, where exactly are we heading today, you rightly ask? We'll be cruising at 38,000 feet, heading northwest some 3,300 miles over to the Belgian capital of Brussels. As we reach our altitude, it's time to unbuckle my seatbelt and let the show begin. We'll start by taking a look at the menu and ordering up some lunch, presented beautifully, of course, in a leather folio. The selection is naturally expansive. Do let me know down below what you choose. Remember, you can eat whenever and however much you want. After placing my order with a friendly crew member, I'm served some warm nuts and a delicious mango juice. Don't worry, more champagne and something special and alcoholic is coming up in due course. I'm also presented with some canapes consisting of a sweet potato tartlet, hummus with a lamb barret, and smoked salmon with poached pear. Whilst I gorge on this, let's take a proper look around my hotel room in the sky. There are a total of six luxury suites on board this 777, laid out in a 111. We'll focus on the window suite for now, but when it comes to sleep, we'll take a look at the middle one, which features virtual windows. Yes, this is a thing. The focal point is, of course, this incredible squishy rich leather armchair designed with NASA technology. It's hands down the comfiest plane seat I've ever sat in, and yes, that includes the Gulfstream G650. There's a tablet to control all elements of your suite and the all-important individual air vents. Oh, and a first on board a plane is actually separate climate control settings for your room. In front of you is a huge 32-inch 4K display serving up the most extensive in-flight entertainment, which we'll check out in just a sec. Of course, this is also the only fully enclosed suite on board a commercial plane, with the door running from floor to ceiling. Yes, Air France do have a floor to ceiling curtain in their Le Premier, but it's not quite the same. There's a full-size closet which also houses your mattress pad and noise-cancelling B&W headphones. There's a huge vanity mirror with compartment housing your writing kit, pillow spray, moisturiser and facial mist. If this is not enough, there's also a mini bar, which is arguably pointless as the drinks are not chilled and you can order whatever you want from the crew. Lastly, the lighting controls, which are frankly incredible. You can adjust not only the brightness, but change the color of your suite's lighting. It's truly beyond what you'd ever need, but hey, it's there. With lunch almost here, let's retract my tray table. A rich cotton tablecloth is laid out and promptly set to cater for my appetizer. Of course, more Dom is served to complement, you've guessed it, caviar. Emirates have actually introduced unlimited caviar on board their first class flights, which is a really cool touch, but I can't say I'd see myself having more than two portions on a long haul flight. Time to hit the dining button on my seat, and I glide forwards in the perfect position to begin this gluttonous affair. So if you've not eaten caviar before, here's the routine. Firstly, grab a blini. Step two, add your garnishes. For me, it's creme fraiche and egg whites. Now for the caviar itself, served on a mother of pearl spoon. Finally, time to eat. All in one or else it will go everywhere. Next up, rather than the routine steak I order on such flights, I've gone for the Thai red prawn curry, served with jasmine rice and pak choy. This is phenomenal. The silky rich red Thai sauce is an eruption of flavor tamed by the delicate jasmine rice. And thankfully it's not overpoweringly spicy, which can often be the case. My table is set once more, now the dessert. But there's also something very special coming. Of course, Hennessy Paradise, one of the most expensive drinks served on any first class flight. I can't say cognac is my thing, but it was certainly enjoyable. For dessert, I opt for the chocolate brownie, bathed in a rich creme anglaise. It's again outstanding. To close, I'm presented with a warm towel to freshen up, and some Emirati chocolates. Shame they're not Belgian ones, given our destination. I think it's time to change into something a little more comfy. 
How incredible are those fiber optic lights in the floor? Yes, you can even adjust the brightness of those. Right, let's boot the Tims off and get my slippers on. And let's grab my PJs and amenity kit and head over to the lavatory. There are two of these to the front of the first class cabin. Now this is where sadly the world's best first class struggles to compete with its rival, Emirates' own A380. Its big brother features one of the largest bathrooms in the sky, complete with a shower. Such a shame there's not room to fit these on the 777. Anyway, given the space they have to work with, this is still a tastefully designed lav. There's no hiding the fact that it's still quite a small space though. So the provided Bulgari amenity kit, what's inside? Well, pretty much everything you'd ever need on an 8 hour flight. The highlight of course is the Bulgari perfume, retailing north of $300. Time to try out those PJs then. Presented in a folio, which FYI, works as a great MacBook sleeve. These are of course the coveted Emirates moisturizing pajamas. Yes, it's marketing PR jargon, but my goodness, they're among the comfiest in the sky. After a quick freshen up, let's head back to my suite. I still can't get over the design of this cabin. It's stunningly beautiful. Back in one kilo, let's shut the door and give this NASA seat a proper go. One touch of the bed button converts this seat into a fully lay flat position. Now this is all well and good, but it's not quite a bed just yet. Thankfully, the wonderful FA is making up one of the other suites as we speak. So let's return to a seated position and go and check out what the middle room is like. And of course, take a well overdue nap. Let's head down the starlit corridor to two Foxtrot. Wow, just wow. It honestly doesn't seem like I'm on board a commercial aircraft at this point. The party piece of course in the middle suite are these virtual windows, essentially 4K monitors linked to an outside camera. I mean, once again, the smile is not to be wiped off my face. Right, let's pull up the serving hatch and get the door closed to ensure full privacy in my new bedroom. For sleeping, the middle suite is my top pick, given it's quieter and actually slightly larger. The bed itself is wonderful, complete with a plush mattress topper and silky high thread count Egyptian cotton bedding. Night all, catch you all in a couple of hours, well for you a couple of seconds, for afternoon tea and a breakdown of how much I paid for this ticket. I wake up somewhere over Austria, would you believe there is yet more food to consume? Well, for the science of an airline review, I guess I'll have to make room. Whilst I could have taken this in yet another suite, I don't really want to create more work for the ground crew, so let's head over to my initial suite, one kilo. After checking out the menu, the crew recommends the traditional Arabic dessert plate, and who am I to turn down such a recommendation? With my order placed, we really must try out one of the quirks of this product, the provided binoculars of course. This may seem a really silly addition. I actually found it quite fun gazing out the window, surveying the Austrian countryside from afar. Yes, it may indeed be a bit gimmicky, but who else is doing this in the sky? Time to retract my tray table, and my cappuccino is promptly served. I do chuckle to myself that airlines like BA struggle to keep their coffee machines working in first, when Emirates go to the extent of even showing off with coffee art. So here we go, a selection of Arabic treats, quite heavy pastry wise and filled with a variety of nuts and dates. These were tasty and extremely sweet, but I'd sooner enjoy scones and clotted cream for afternoon tea. Next I order a DC, because well, if your Trek Trendy bingo cards are not full by now, this should at least help. It's time to check out the in-flight entertainment. A remote is stowed in your seat, and for the first time I've ever seen, it's wireless. Frustratingly, it was pretty glitchy, but not to worry, there is yet another way to control the TV. The sweets tablet, of course. Emirates have a huge selection of movies on their in-flight entertainment, named Ice. I'd rate it as the best in the sky, purely by sheer variety. I'm informed it won't be long until we begin our final descent. So as I go and change into my clothes, let's take a look at the cost of this trip. Now as stated, this ticket booked for cash can be over a staggering $10,000, but by booking via what I'm gonna show you saves significantly. Of course, air miles. But fear not, you don't need to spend hundreds of thousands on your company expenses in order to generate these miles. I actually bought the required miles for this trip in one of Emirates' frequent Skyward sales. Sadly, taxes have increased as of late, but this ticket cost me 
a total of £1,767. Now I had a few miles left over from a previous flight, but if you were to buy from scratch, this ticket would cost around £2,060. Yes, this is a lot of cash, but at a quarter of the asking price online for a one-off trip, I certainly think it's worth it. So back in my suite and changed with a fresh NASA jumper, it's time to get ready for our arrival. A cold towel is provided to freshen up, which is greatly appreciated. And with that, I fasten my seatbelt. We begin to glide over the Belgium countryside, and it's not long before we're on final approach into Brussels International Airport. After a short taxi to our gate, it's time to deplane, thereby ending the most luxurious flight I've ever taken. And trust me, I've tried them all. There may be better ground service provisions, such as Air France, and more space on SQ's A380 suites, but the hardware on EK's new first wins hands down for comfort, privacy, and design. Thanks so much for watching and for joining me on this luxurious adventure. Do let me know, as always, what you thought in the comments down below, and I'll catch you all again next time.